Hi guys, this is John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru, chilling in my hotel room in Peoria, Illinois, population 111,000. Anyway, I got an email from a, an attendee from a course I taught in Fargo. Her name's Dawn, and she had a question about maintenance therapy. And here's the basics of her email. She has, has a patient who has muscular dystrophy who has been on periodic therapy and just returned to therapy after about a year break and had a significant decline in that one year period. And she wanted to know if that was the kind of patient that you had therapy and, and uh, basically some general questions about you know, medical necessity. And so anyway, I'm just going to kind of touch base on a few things here. Number one, because the disease is muscular dystrophy, I'm not sure how old this patient is. There are some patients that with muscle, muscular dystrophy, they can have a normal lifespan. But um, depending on the type of MD it is, it can be very aggressive and they usually can die young. So I wonder, I just would question whether this patient has Medicare. Uh, because not all insurance types may recognize the maintenance provision. I, I'm a little fuzzy on that because this, this ruling for maintenance therapy was against Health and Human Services and the, the government agency that oversees all health care in the United States. And so uh, it could have ramifications to other payers, but... I'm mainly interested in and uh, aware of uh, Medicare regulations with that. So anyway, your question was, you know, based on the fact that the patient had lost a lot of strength, would this be the kind of patient you would expect to see have maintenance therapy, and what are some things to consider with that? And so let me give you some basic things to consider. Number one, uh, is it reasonable to expect patients with a progressive disease to have maintenance therapy. Well, it can be, definitely. Um, but then we got to look at whether or not, uh, how they're presenting clinically. Um, because they have a complication, a uh, disease process does not necessarily mean they need maintenance therapy. So somebody that has kind of a, a gradual progression of disease like Parkinson's, muscular dystrophy, MS, it could be very safe and effective to evaluate them, put them on a program that somebody else will carry out, and maybe they last maintain that way for a few months, and then they need to get another referral, and then you adjust their home program that they or their caregiver do, and then they last for a month or two, and then you see them again. So you don't necessarily need to have them on maintenance therapy, you might just have them on multiple episodes over a course of time. Um, keeping them on therapy for maintenance, generally what you're going to need to prove is, number one, they are not very stable in their clinical presentation. So let's say you, you need the caregiver to do daily exercises with them. But their variability in performance makes it hard for a non-skilled person to assess what needs to actually be done for that particular patient on that particular day. So if the variability of the patient causes a clinical presentation that is unstable or changing over time, we would say evolving, and it, it's very progressive, and it makes it not safe and not effective for a non-licensed person to work with them because of that complexity, then you, you probably do have a maintenance patient. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to keep them on maintenance forever because as we've probably seen in all of our clinical uh, careers, we've seen patients that have progressive diseases and they go through these periods where there's like a rapid decline and then they steady out for a while and then they decline again. So, you know, perhaps we're seeing them during the rapid decline because of the changes that are going on that require a lot of assessment. And, and modifications and fine-tuning that a non-skilled person would not be able to handle. But then they, they, they start to steady off for a little bit. And at that point, because they're more stable, it might be effective and safe to design a program that a non-licensed person could carry out 
during that stable time period. And then they start to decline again. And that, at that point, you would hope they would get another referral for therapy. So anyway, those would be some considerations that I would look at. Because just because they, the patient declined a lot in one year doesn't need, mean they necessarily need therapy. Because we would probably expect that with a patient with a muscular dystrophy type diagnosis. Um, so that's, that's basically uh, it in a nutshell. It's that variability that, and it's also keeping in mind the words that Medicare uses to determine medical necessity, complexity of care, what's the clinical complexity of the patient, what's the complexity of our services, and is it safe and is it effective for somebody other than us to have done the care? And if it would be safe and effective for a non-licensed person to do it, then it's, it's not a skilled maintenance patient. Anyway, I hope that helps, Don, um, and hopes, helps you if you watch this video. Please like and subscribe, and please comment. Feel free to comment if you have any other suggestions for videos. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.